People around him were amazed at his vast and diverse interests. He liked a new painting, music, and literature. He was an excellent chess player, and it was quite possible for him to discuss philosophical subjects and talk about modern dramatic art. But science was the essence of his life. Robert Koch is considered as one of the fathers of bacteriology and was an example of absolute purposefulness, unusual patience, and scrupulousness. He was born on December 11, 1843, in the small German town of Klausthal in the family of Hermann Koch, a counselor. By the age of four, Robert had learned to read, and a year later he went to school. His parents wanted him to become a trader, but the boy dreamt of travels. He wanted not only to see the world, but also to explore it. From very early on in his childhood, Robert observed the behavior of domestic birds, collected stones, and also collected stamps with images of remote countries. Having noticed the hobbies of the boy, the relatives agreed with his job choice. In April 1862, Robert joined the Faculty of Natural Science at the University of Göttingen, and in two years, he was studying in the Faculty of Medicine. Here he studied with enthusiasm, and in one semester he became the best student and received first prize for his scientific work in the field of gynecology. Later, he received a doctorate degree for this work. Despite all merits, Robert found himself jobless after graduating from university. With difficulty, he found the job of district sanitary inspector in the small town of Wolstein. When he was 23, Robert married Emmy Fratz, the daughter of a general whom he had known since childhood and who, by Koch's mistaken belief, shared his views on life. Their daughter Gertrude was born a year later after their marriage. She, instead of her mother, became the best friend and the true assistant of the scientist Robert Koch. Soon the young doctor gained prestige among the inhabitants of Wolstein. But Koch was not self-satisfied. He did not always know the diseases of patients and how to treat them. Medicine at the end of the 19th century could diagnose some diseases but could not identify the cause. Robert Koch was determined to find the answer. Even though he was far from the scientific world, libraries and laboratories, and he only had an inferior microscope. Soon, he made his first discovery. Koch examined the blood of sheep who had died of anthrax under a microscope and saw a gathering of sticks and balls of strand. And this was how the pathogen anthrax was found. The scientists also discovered that in adverse conditions, the bacteria turned to spores and in this form was able to be preserved for many years. Koch's discovery contradicted the theory of Rudolf Virchow, the king of medicine in that period, who considered that all diseases were the result of dysfunction of the normal activity of cells, and he didn't even want to hear about any microbes. For that reason, it was only in 1881 when Robert Koch obtained a laboratory in Berlin at his disposal and continued his research. At that time, he researched tuberculosis, a terrible and mysterious disease that was the cause of one of every seven deaths on the planet. On March 24, 1882, after two years of persistent and exhausting work, Robert Koch proved that pulmonary tuberculosis was also an infectious disease. Pulmonary tuberculosis will continue to exist as long as there are slums in the earth where the sun rays can't penetrate, Koch declared in the Medical Congress, which made him well known. Since then, the microbe found by him, the pathogen of tuberculosis, was named Koch's bacillus. A year later, having made an expedition to Egypt and India where cholera raged, Koch found the pathogen of this illness as well. He determined that Vibrio cholerae is transferred from one person to another and could be found in water, on dirty hands, or dirty fruit. But the scientists still didn't know how to treat the afflicted people.
Only on August 4, 1890, after years of persistent work, Robert Koch declared that he had practically found a tuberculosis vaccine. However, time revealed the inefficiency of tuberculin created by him. After great triumph, the scientist met great failure. His family life collapsed as well. He divorced Emmy. In a short period of time, Koch changed into a worn out and decrepit elderly person. But then destiny smiled again. He met Hedwig Freiburg, who became his devoted friend and wife. She accompanied Robert on his trips to Africa, India, and Italy. Everywhere he went to struggle against epidemics of plague, malaria, and sleeping sickness. In 1905, 62-year-old Robert Koch was awarded the Nobel Prize as an outstanding researcher of the present. Five years later, on May 20, 1910, the scientist, who had suffered from cardiac insufficiency for a long time, died. The entire life of Robert Koch followed the motto which he had written on the sheets of his first scientific work, Never be idle.